what's up everybody it's your favorite countdowns favorite nerd and today we are going to be talking about the best and worst transformers of the year now i am just showing you some footage here while i talk and set this up this is a hundred percent subjective it's totally my opinion it's not up for debate it's my opinion and we do this every year and there's always somebody that's like i'm wrong you can't be wrong it's what i like it's what i thought was the best etc cetera, etc cetera. now when we move into this i also want to be clear that like i didn't buy many transformers this year there just weren't that many that were appealing to me so we'll be using thumbnails mainly while we talk about this stuff and um let's go ahead and move through it and we'll get started with the most disappointing we have four categories most disappointing which means figures that i thought were going to be better and ended up not being so and then most surprisingly good which means figures i thought were going to be awful and then were surprisingly better and then we'll move into the worst and best which i feel like are pretty self-explanatory so let's go ahead and get started and we'll start with most disappointing figures of the year. And we're going to start with number five, which is TFC Lucifer. And the reason why he's number five is because I didn't necessarily expect anything better from TFC. And I didn't expect any sort of growth, God forbid, or progress from this company. However, when we sit back and look at it kind of objectively for the amount of years that they've been making figures, you would expect some sort of leaps and bounds in terms of their quality. And while this may be better than what they had four years ago, and I wouldn't argue that, it's not necessarily good enough to say, wow, look at the growth here. It does seem like they're moving at a snail's pace when you compare them to other third-party companies that have been around for the same amount of time, which are very few. So the point is, is that this figure should be a lot better than it is just for the sake of how long it has been around. And when I say it, I mean the company. Moving on to number four, Unique Toys Nero. Unique Toys has been killing these movie figures. Every movie figure that I've looked at from Unique Toys has blown me away. The lockdown was incredible. The Optimus Prime was incredible. And while this is really good too the transformation elegance was not there it was clumsy and awkward and aggravating and frustrating which is just not what i expect from unique toys in regards to this movie stuff challenger and whatever they called their lockdown are some of the best third party figures ever released in the history of third party and while this has a lot of the paint and a lot of the sculpt work and the articulation that's right on par with those previous releases the engineering is not there and that's why it fits most disappointing doesn't mean it's a bad figure because it's not it's just disappointing. Number three, Takara Starscream. And the reason why this one is so low on the list is because my expectations for this company are not where they used to be three years ago. However, I do expect certain things. I do expect for it to be able to stand up. I do expect for it not to have a wide QC issue like the ankles. And I do expect that it be highly articulated because that's a standard that Takara has set within the last couple years, since their Sunstreaker, namely. And this is not that. Now, in the talk of just Transformers over the year, this doesn't make the worst list, but it does make the disappointing list. However, for figures that I acquired over the course of 20, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Wait till Friday. My number two for most disappointing figure of the year is X-Transbot's Lock. Not to be confused with Coot, which I have a habit of saying, and I think that's just because Coot has just overtaken my mind in regard to what that character is actually called. I think I'm starting to call him Coot when I talk about him in the... 86 movie, but neither here nor there. The reason why this figure is disappointing is because X Transbots has been doing really well recently. And yes, there's hiccups along the way, don't get me wrong, but all five of the Stunicons were pretty good, if not great. How they combined is a different conversation, but his individual release is pretty phenomenal. The Quintesson outpriced my interest, but it was still a good thing. They just had a lot of good releases. And then this one just came out of the blue and had all sorts of issues, build issues, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'll also say that I was surprised at how good it was. It doesn't make that list, but only because of the nightmares that I had heard of how bad it was. But that being said, it was bad enough to at minimum disappoint me in regard to where I hold this company right now. And numero uno, new age scrapper and mix master. Now, Mixmaster doesn't necessarily fit this criteria, but that chess piece for Scrapper just seems like such an oversight from a company that's pretty consistent and really quality goods. And like I said, doesn't mean that this is an awful set. It's just disappointing, especially with the standard that this company has set in the past in regard to the quality of their releases. Love them or hate them, and they don't do much for me, to be honest, but New Age makes a quality product. Whether you like Legends, whether you like their aesthetic choices, et cetera, et cetera, that's up for debate. But the product itself is quality, except for this one, which is why it reaches the most Disappointing. And here's a quick look to the best of my cropping abilities at our disappointing figures of the year. And we've seen worse years, don't get me wrong. And just to reiterate, this isn't about what's bad, it's about where my standards and expectations were in regard to the actual release and how that hit. Let's move on. 
Moving on to the surprisingly good figures. Once again, figures that I had lower expectations for, and as they came out, I was pleasantly surprised. And we'll start with number five, the Zeta Aerobots. Now, I like Zeta, and I hold Zeta in pretty high regard, especially in terms of how they've redesigned and reformatted, you might say, the combiner game. But when I heard they were doing a Legends class Superion, I definitely had a ho-hum attitude, and I don't think much of their individual releases overall. That being said, I'm still not buying this set and ultimately couldn't care less. However, it doesn't mean that these figures weren't great, because they were, surprisingly so. Not only did they seem modern and ready to compete with the likes of Magic Square and New Age right out of the gate, they also had a very nostalgic quality that brought me back to the days of snotty noses and color outside of the lines and what I mean by that is my childhood because they were very reminiscent of the G1 toys just in a super updated manner. Moving on to number four, Magic Square, Perceptor. And I think Magic Square is a decent enough company. I have issues with some of their material choices and so on and so forth and I think a lot of their toys are over complicated and over engineered. However, I think that overall at the end of the day they make a pretty good product. But I'm not sure that they've ever quite captured an action figure element in the same manner or regard that they captured here with the Perceptor. Every time I turned a joint on this figure, the pose just kept getting cooler and cooler and more lifelike. There's an art to that that's often overlooked and underappreciated. But there was something about this figure that every time you moved him, he just looked more natural and more lifelike. And that's a pretty challenging feat for any company, let alone a Legends company with figures at this scale. Which brings us to number three, Fans Hobby Nightwalker. After having looked at the previous mold, obviously I didn't have high expectations for this figure. But it's like they used the previous mold of this figure to really dial in and lock in how they were going to approve upon it with future releases. And they have. It's very rare that I have a figure on loan to me and then turn around the next day and purchase it online. And this would be an example of one of those. Within 24 hours of mailing it back, I had purchased it flat out because it was just that surprisingly good. Number two, Studio Series Hot Rod. Is it amazing? No. Is it overpriced? In my opinion, definitely. But did it reach a bar far beyond what has been set with Hasbro in the past regarding figures of this scale? Absolutely. Absolutely. This figure was painted. It did away with a lot of the hollowness. The engineering is what you would expect. The materials felt good. The build was good. Pins over pegs, accessories to boot, etc., etc. And it really was kind of surprising at just how dialed in they were on this release. I just wish it was at a lower cost, but it doesn't change the fact that it was surprising how good it was. And our last one, the movie masterpiece Prime. I don't regard the word masterpiece to hold any water when it comes to Hasbro. And to be honest, I only let it hold half a cup of water when it comes to Takara. And when I saw this was coming, I was like, oh dear lord, here's another figure that I'm going to say is awful, and all the basement dwellers who probably could have been far more had they applied themselves to anything other than buying $15 figures are going to drag my name through the mud for the next two weeks as a result of it. And yet when I got it in hand, I was amazed. It's articulated, it's painted, it's sculpted out the wazoo. Wazoo. What am I, 80 years old? Anyway, the transformation flowed like the Mississippi River after a nice rain. It was just a very solid, credible release from a line, an organization that I don't think a whole lot of when it comes to figures that are supposed to be of this caliber, and it nailed it. I don't think I've ever been as surprised as to the quality of a figure as I was with this one this year. And here's a look at the five selections of mine that were the most surprisingly good for the year 2021. Interesting to see the official made it on there twice. I think it says something about where the official is headed and how well they're kind of doing right now in the current market. Let's move on to the worst figures of the year. This is the category that always gets people all upset. To the boards, I say. And I'll say, I don't even know how to log into it, so I don't care. If you like it, you win, but let's get started. Number five, Iron Factory Power Glide. I love Iron Factory. I would never collect Legends in a million years, but if I were to collect Legends, Iron Factory would be the way that I would go. They're well painted. They have tons of character. They have tons of accessories. They look wicked. They're an interesting take. They're more dynamic. And my opinion than any other Legends line out there. But this thing was like they let the interns take over for a day. And we got a figure that didn't have the striking presence, that didn't have the striking paint, where things didn't clip in properly. On top of that, the transformation was kind of clumsy, and it's just not good. It just seems like a batch of cookies that got taken out of the oven way too soon. Get that cookie in there. We got time? Let that cookie bake. Number four, MMC Stellar Prominion. This is a company that I do hold in high regard with their reputation 
production and their releases. They have far more hits than they have misses, and even their misses are usually quality products. The problem with this one is that it didn't function properly. Rarely is that the case with this company, but I guess if you throw enough knives at a bullseye, eventually you will miss, and this was that. The leg's not locking in, it collapsing into itself. It's supposed to be part of their kind of masterpiece line, but it really wasn't, and certainly wasn't up to that standard. It just didn't seem, once again, much like the Iron Factory Power Glide release, it didn't seem like the core MMC team was responsible for this. It seemed like they let the B team do it. And as a result, we all suffered. Number three, Planet X Ratchet. And once again, I like Planet X. I think they make good figures overall. I love far more of their figures than I don't. I'm surprised at how long they've been able to vitalize that War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron line. It speaks both to the quality of their figures and to the quality of that game. That being said, this one wasn't it. And neither was the Ironhide. Now, I think these came out this year. I reviewed them this year, so I had to throw them in there. But I know I was late to the party, so it's possible they could have came out last year. But they were so awful and cheesy and cheap feeling that I had to include them here. Now, thankfully, we got the Shockwave, I think, after that. And that was a beautiful figure. Right back to their standard and kind of pattern that we're used to regarding them. But these things were out of control. Number two, Magic Square Ultra Magnus. It's just not functional. It blows apart into a billion pieces and realigns to create a figure that looks beautiful as long as it's not doing anything. But the moment that you try to make it have any sort of life to it whatsoever, it begins to fail itself. It just doesn't have the action figure elements that are required to compete in today's game regarding Legends. It's too cutthroat in that department, and there's no time for errors like this of figures that just don't work. Looks beautiful as long as it's just standing there with its arms down waiting for the school bus to show up. But anytime you want to do anything else with it, you're pretty much out of luck. And our number one, in my opinion, shouldn't come to anybody as any surprise, Flames Toys Victory Saber. And if you want to get technical and say that's not one release, I'll give it to the Victory Leo. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just saying this for the sake of argument. This is a very expensive piece. So expensive, in fact, that they are not allowed, in my opinion, to fail this heavy. If you know anything about how I feel about the Dakar Starscream, if you know anything how I feel about the original release of Tra X Transbots Dicka or KFC, whatever it was at the time, then you'll know that I will not tolerate a figure not standing up. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable at $20. It's unacceptable at $100. And it's certainly unacceptable at $800 which is what the combined mode of this thing basically asked for. Very similarly to the Ultra Magnus from Magic Square, the most important element of any of this stuff is for it to be able to function. And if it can't stand up, it can't function. And that makes you the worst figure of the year. And here's a quick look at our, our five choices of the year. And once again, you know, to keep things in perspective, a lot of these, if you were to compare them to the worst figures of the year five years ago, they would demolish them, which says something about overall kind of growth. But it doesn't change the fact that the standard now have changed and these don't meet them. Let's end on a high note. Best figures of the year. Bam, bam, bam. Number five, three zero prime. Now, I looked at the Nemesis Prime, but I would imagine that the proper Optimus Prime would do me better, just in terms of my connection to the character. But it doesn't change the fact that this thing came in at a reasonable price. It was beautifully sculpted. It was super engineered. It was beautifully painted. It came with a ton of accessories. It did everything it was supposed to do. It was able to stand, which is important, as we've just established, and even at a fraction of the price of the Flame Toys. It was just an amazing, amazing release. Is it my favorite sculpt of Optimus Prime? No. But is it my least favorite? No. I think it looks pretty good. I don't think their Megatron translated as well, but I think this Prime actually looks pretty amazing. It's got me questioning a lot of things about myself because I really want to pick this thing up. I just don't know where to put it, but it's a very, very, very well done piece. Surprisingly good and awesome. Even though 3-0 makes good stuff, what I mean by that is that like even for 3-0 standards, this was amazing. Really, really well done. Had a lot of the kind of stuff that I've been asking to 3-0 to kind of dial in on elegance and joint tolerances, etc, etc. It's just checks every box for me. It's, it's a very beautiful piece. Next up, X Transbots Groove. Ironically, they really got in the groove on this one. I think that Fuzz is a decent figure. It's just the transformation is a little obnoxious and the shoulders are a little wonky. But Groove reminded us that they are capable of doing better. Beautifully painted, beautifully sculpted, well articulated, with an easy and smooth transformation that's even surprising for X Transbots. Not the most flashy or pretty looking figure in, re 
regard to kind of just physical aesthetics doesn't change the fact that it's really well done number three dx 9s attila at least i think it was attila they're minosaur it's really well done it's solid it's built well it was unfortunate that the legs didn't hook on perfectly but it doesn't change the fact that it's still a beautiful piece fits in perfectly with the masterpiece aesthetic scales properly and structurally sound as well as well articulated just really well done it's the only company in my opinion that can compete with zeta in regard to combiners so far and that's saying something and when i say zeta i mean the zeta design team the, the people re also responsible for the toy world constructor number two has lab unicron it's just got power to it and if you know you know i know a lot of people feel differently about this than i do most people that i know that feel differently about it are people that don't have it most people that i know that have it also have very few hasbro products in their collection but have to tip their hat to this thing it has the sculpt presence and dynamics of a piece far beyond what the asking price for it was and the asking price was high it's sculpted beautifully it's painted beautifully and it has the presence of a champion so much in fact that people who aren't in the game that come to my house and sort of hang out are 100 sure that it's the most valuable piece in my collection that costs the most and they'll say that while standing right next to a prime one fourteen hundred dollar statue it just has that kind of power to it and number one the number one figure of the year for me is this robo sin prime i didn't buy it i don't have a place for it although that three zero is making me ask myself if i couldn't figure something out but it doesn't change the fact that this is without a doubt the figure that that caused the most joy for me all year. I've never quite handled something in the history of my reviewing that made me almost like laugh and cry joyful tears at the same time there's something that calls back to your childhood of wanting to see these things transform in front of your eyes and to see one finally do it and then talk to you and wish you a happy birthday i don't know what to tell you man it's satisfying it feels good let alone the sculpt build paint everything is beautiful the packaging is also beautiful which i know i care about more than other people but still is but it's really the satisfaction and the genuine heartstrings that it pulls on while transforming and speaking i can't tell you why or how but like if I were the Grinch it'd make my heart three times bigger it has almost like a whimsical power about it and those on my Patreon saw that like when I first did my impressions of it and I saw it transform for the first time like I just started laughing like it just brought me an insane amount of like honest true genuine joy it made me feel good in the words of Holly Berry it did something that scratched an itch that was 35 years old and has never been able to be scratched it's historic and it deserves its spot and here's a look at our are five choices of the year pretty interesting um and once again it's also interesting to me that like i didn't buy much this year man i bought both x trans bots protect the bots i bought sea spray 2.0 fans toys drag strip fans toys sound wave unicron the last dx9 stunicon whatever that was to make minasaur and then mmc rung mmc getaway and mmc chrome dome and rewind and i think that's it i probably missed one or two but i mean we're talking about like eight to ten figures you know there just wasn't a whole lot for masterpiece collectors this year in my opinion but that's a conversation that we're going to be having very soon anyway hope your feelings are intact if not i apologize for hurting them and i'll be back on friday with my final list for the year which is the best worst of the things that i acquired overall it'll be a lot of reruns of stuff from today and monday but it'll also be some new stuff in there too see you then thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time take care